Welcome, welcome, welcome to everybody. Um, as you join, please, if you haven't already, please go ahead and install and activate the Create Block Theme plugin on your local environment. Um, you don't actually have to have it for today. Uh, you can just have any block theme, but Create Block Theme will help us create one. Um, and those of you who know me know that I, I like the plugin. It's one of my favorite plugins for block development. Um, and then let us know where you are joining us from in the world. Um, uh, I'm from Cape Town uh, in South Africa, and uh, I'm always interested to, to see where folks are coming in from. Okay, so while while we do that, somebody pointed out to me the other day that I keep forgetting to do an introduction slide. Um, I just kind of assume that folks <laughs> don't care who I am, so I never do one. Um, so if, if you've never seen me before, my name is Jonathan. Uh, I'm from Cape Town in South Africa, as I mentioned earlier. I am an ex-developer to an code instructor, which means I do these kinds of things. Um, and I'm a sponsored contributor at Automatic to the training team. So I work with the training team and we create tutorials and lesson plans and online workshops like this all around how to build with and work with and develop with, with WordPress. Uh, so good morning from California. We've got folks from Belgium. Uh, Jean's back. Hey, Jean. Uh, Pacific Northwest. Awesome. Cool. Um, I'm just going to kind of get into it today because there's, there's quite a bit of theory and talking that I'm going to do. So while folks come in, please do feel free to keep letting us know where you're joining us from. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about not custom templates and template parts. Ha, ha, ha. That's funny. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about lock patterns. Um, <laughs> This is live editing of slides in a workshop. Um, and what block patterns are, they're one type of reusable um, uh, elements that you can work with in a, in a block theme or in, in the WordPress block editor. Uh, they are quite useful because they enable uh, PHP functionality within a block theme, uh, which is quite cool if you want to do custom functionality outside of what's available in blocks. So today we're going to dive into how to create them. We're going to create a couple of live ones, um, and I'll show you how it all works. Before we get started, uh, first of all, welcome again to everybody, and welcome to Catherine, and thank you to Catherine for hosting co-hosting with us today. Catherine is the is the face you should see at the top of the video there. Catherine is from from Canada, if, if I'm correct. Yes, Montreal, Canada. Canada. Montreal, Canada. So one day we're going to convince uh, Catherine to do a French speaking online workshop. <laughs> Um, as always, we are presenting in focus mode, so that means you all can see Catherine and I, and we can see all of your videos, but you can't see each other's videos. And the main reason for this is just to prevent any any Zoom bombing. Uh, we have had some Zoom Zoom bombing situations in the past. It doesn't seem to happen so much anymore, um, but we still continue presenting in focus mode. Um, and as always, you are welcome to ask questions. If you want to ask a question, you're welcome to just post it in the chat. Or you're welcome to unmute um, and and ask the question verbally if you prefer. All that I do ask is if you if you do have a question that is not specifically re related to something I'm doing at that time, I will. There are sections that I leave breaks for questions unrelated to what's going on. We'll use those for those. Uh, but if the question is around telling me to slow down or pausing on screen because there's something that you want to catch up on or type or code or whatever, then perfect to let me know immediately and just say, hey, slow down. Um, I need to see what you're doing there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to code along with me today, we'll, we're going to be using the functionality of the Create Block Theme plugin just to create a new block theme. That's the only reason we're going to use it. So if you'd like to do that along with me, um, please please do go ahead and install it. Um, if I'm going too fast, please do let me know. Um, <clears throat> we will be posting the session to WordPress TV afterwards. And for more WordPress-focused content, please do visit learn.wordpress.org. That is the platform where the training team um, and all the contributors who work on the training team publish all of this content. So the online workshops are linked through there. Uh, the tutorials are there. The courses are there. So please do go and check that out. <clears throat> um, yeah, Catherine and Serge has already, um, sorry, Sergio, Catherine's already answered your question. Um, it is an easy way to create a block theme. It also has some other functionality, which I love, um, but it's just a quick and easy way to get a block theme going, which I'll show you in a second. So for today, what are our learning outcomes? Um, we're going to learn what are block patterns, and we're going to 
compare patterns to template parts. So if you've joined the previous session and we, we showed you what template parts look like, or you've read about template parts and you want to understand why you would use a pattern versus template part, we're going to dive into that briefly. Uh, we're then going to look at the block pattern directory and how that fits into things. Um, and then we're going to dive into creating patterns. We're going to create a block pattern just using PHP code. Um, well, kind of just using PHP code. Um, and then we're going to create a pattern by creating a PHP file in the patterns directory. And I'm going to show you pros and cons of both approaches. Um, and then I'm going to show you how, how you can use patterns to enable PHP functionality. So what I mean by that is something that needs to be dynamic or something that needs to pull from a specific location um, and, and how patterns are used to enable that in, in block themes. Um, the resources slide is just all the links, which Catherine will be will be feeding through to you all as we go through, but they're in the slides if you want to have a look at them later. Um, I did post a link to the slides in the meetup event, but I need to post an updated version because the slides have changed slightly, but I will do that after the session. Um, and then our objectives for today is we're going to create a very simple button pattern. Um, it's going to be very simple and straightforward, and we're going to use that to, to register the pattern in PHP code. Then we're going to create a custom footer pattern, and we're going to do that um, while we create the pattern file. And I'm going to show then I'm going to use those two examples to show the pros and cons. Then I'm going to show you how to register a pattern category, which is very handy if you are working with a custom theme for a client. And I'll show you why that's handy to use. Um, and if there's time, we might dive into how to disable the pattern categories uh, towards the end. Um, and then we're going to create a cover pattern, and we're going to link that to an image that is part of the theme. So in other words, once you've packaged the theme, you want the cover pattern to read that image file from, from, the, file, um, from the file structure, not from the media library. And I'm going to show you how to, how to manage that. Um, and that should cover the basics of how patterns get used. And then if there are any questions, we'll see if we need to dive into those. Okay, let's get going. If you have a, a WordPress install up and ready, or you want to fire up your, your IDE now, if you want to follow along, now's the time to do it. Um, I have, uh, as always, a very basic WordPress install set up on my local environment. Um, it has just the default themes that come, that come with WordPress. Um, and the only plugins that I have active currently is the Create Block Theme plugin. You'll actually notice I don't even have the Gutenberg plugin active because all of this functionality has been around since I think WordPress 5.8. Um, so I don't even need Gutenberg for this to work. Um, I also have the FakerPress plugin installed. It's not active currently, but I use that to generate some random posts for a previous workshop. I think it was last week for those of you who were there. It's not necessary for today. I just mentioned it before we continue. Okay, so if you haven't already, um, now's the last time I'm going to ask you if you want to follow along to install and activate Create Block Theme. Um, once that plugin is installed and active, you should see in your appearance menu, just below the editor menu option, a create block theme menu option. It also adds uh, something about fonts, which if you want to learn how about how to embed fonts and local fonts, we're going to be doing one of those soon, uh, probably next week. I know um, one of the other contributors did one, but I'm probably going to be doing one soon as well. But today we're just going to be working on creating a new block theme. So if I click on create block theme, it gives me a bunch of options. I can export, I can create a child theme. Um, but for the purposes of the day, I'm just going to go with create a blank theme. Now you can call your theme anything you want to. Uh, I'm going to be very boring, boring, and I'm going to call it John's blank theme. Um, and you don't need to worry about descriptions and URIs and all that. If you don't need to worry about it today, we can always add those in later if we need to, but that's the, the basic required data that I need. And I'm going to hit the generate button. And it's then going to create a whole bunch of theme files for me. Um, so if I go back into my themes, I will see that I now have my blank theme there. It doesn't have a screenshot, but if I switch over to my code editor, which I don't yet have open, so let me open that quickly. Um, I'm using uh, Visual Code Studio for the session. Uh, there's John blank theme, um, and it has a theme.json file with a whole bunch of styles and settings. Uh, it has the style.css with the theme header so that the theme will show up in the dashboard. It has an empty readme, um, and then it has one template, the index template, which is the base required template that all WordPress themes need. Um, and it has two template parts, a header part and a footer part. Now, if this is the first time you're seeing a block theme, uh, I'm not going to dive too much into what all these things do. But the index template is basically a template that WordPress can use to render content. And because there's an index template, any content that I render on my site will use that template, which is fine. Um, 
index template itself, if we have a look at the code right at the top here, it includes the, uh, the header template part. And it includes right at the bottom, sorry, I scrolled down too quickly, the footer template part. So this is very similar to a classic theme calling get header function at the top and the get footer function at the bottom. And then it includes those templates in PHP um, as it would in a classic theme. The header template will show you in the side of what it looks like, but it just contains a logo and a tagline and those kind of things. And the footer just contains the proudly powered by WordPress banner, which we've all seen before on a WordPress theme. Um, so that's that's the code that this create block theme plugin generates for us, so we can start using it. If I switch back over to my browser um, and I activate that theme and I go into the editor, uh, it loads the index file or the index template in the editor for me. And there I can see what it looks like. So there's my header section. My content section currently is just a query loop. And then the footer right at the bottom here, uh, I've got a whole bunch of posts. I'm going to scroll down very quickly. It's got the proudly powered by WordPress. Um, I can check that by clicking on the list view. And I can see there's the header template part, which contains the header content. There's the query loop, which is just sitting in the index.html template. And there's the footer. So that's a basic blank block theme. Right, now we've covered the basics. Now we can get onto the reason we're here today, which is template patterns. But before we do that, I just want to make sure there are no questions before we carry on. So if you have a question about any of this that we've covered so far, you're not sure of, now's a great time to ask it while I grab my sip of coffee before I go. Yeah, doesn't look like a question, so that's good. Okay, so today we're talking about block patterns. Um, so block patterns are predefined layouts. Now there are three different types of predefined layouts um, in, in a WordPress block editor environment. I'm gonna copy the support article about comparing patterns, template parts, and reusable blocks. We've already seen template parts. So when we looked at this theme, we saw there was a header template part and a footer template part. Um, the other one is reusable blocks and the other one is patterns. Today we're focusing on patterns. But very quickly, if you haven't seen a reusable block before, a reusable block basically allows you to save a block or group of blocks, which you can use later in any postal page. Um, one good example of a reusable block is the query loop block that we just saw here. The query loop block, if you add it to a page, comes with this post template block, which comes with a group, which comes with post title, post featured, blah, blah, blah. And I can prove that to you by removing this one um, and then just inserting after inserting a query loop block, if I can spell today, uh, there we go. And so that block contains, let's just choose the layout. Yeah, that's fine. That block contains by default, all these other blocks. So that's a good example of a reusable block. Um, so I could just plunk it down anywhere and I can go. Now the only difference between that core block and an actual reusable block. So the query loop isn't an actual reusable block, but it's an example of how it would work. Is a reusable block, you save it, and then everywhere you use it across your templates or across your post pages, if you edit the original reusable block and you change structure or content, it'll change it across your site. So it's the perfect example to use something for maybe a form that you want to have across your site or a series of subscribe buttons that are going to be the same everywhere you use that block. You save it to a reusable block and then you can put it down anywhere you want. And then if you need to make a change, you don't make a change where it's used across your site, you make a change in the reusable block and it'll then. Um, propagate through the site. Patterns are different to reusable blocks in that the changes that you make to the pattern doesn't change across the site. It's not something that's stored somewhere. And when you insert it, um, it, then, it then works across the site. A pattern is just a collection of blocks. And when you insert a pattern into a poster page or a template, it doesn't insert anything else but that group of blocks. Um, so let me show you what I mean by that, by we're going to create a very simple pattern to start off with. So if you've got the index page open, what I'd like you to do is remove the query loop. So if you're not sure how to remove the query loop, there's a few ways you can do it. Um, you can either just click on Hello World or whatever the first post is. And if you click on the little icon there on the far left, it'll kind of go up one and there's the query loop icon. It's that little almost infinity logo. And you can click on that and that selects the whole query loop. And then you can click on the three little options there and you can just say remove query loop. That's one way you can do it. The other way you can do it is by enabling the list view, finding the query loop in the list. This is my preferred way and removing it there. But either way, you should end up with just your header and your footer. 
is anybody is anybody stuck there? Can I just get one person to say ready? Can continue, uh, and then we'll move on. Or is there nobody following along? Either way. <laughs> okay, so we've got a couple of readies. That's great. Now, what I'd like you to do is using I prefer the list view, but using whichever way you prefer, add in um, a block, and all I want you to do to start off with is add a group block. So you'll know, you'll know from previous sessions that I've run that group blocks are a great way to um, group functionality, hence the term group block. Once you add the group block, there should be a little plus symbol. Um, and you can then click on that button to say you want to add something else to this group. And I want you to add the buttons block. So you should end up with something looking like this. You've got a button block inside of your buttons block. <laughs> um, and it's got a space where you can add some text. Then I want you to add some text. Doesn't matter what you do. I'm going to say something like join me on social media. Okay. Because that's generally why we have buttons, because we want people to do things. Um, whatever text you want to put in, that's fine. And then what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to click on the button and this little toolbar should pop up. And I want you to select the, the alignment option. Sorry, not the alignment option, the not the first alignment option, the second one next to the, next to the uh, link, and make sure that everything is aligned center. So your, your button block is center aligned inside the group. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to change the text color and the background color. So if you don't have the settings open, if you click on the block and you click on the options, you can say, this will go to, let me just do it for you there. It'll say show more settings. And then under the color option over here on the right, so you've got button styles with settings color, make sure that Block is selected, change the text color to white, and change the background color to any color you want. I'm going to go with this blue over here, vivid cyan blue. So you end up with something like that. Um, so if you are following along, please in the chat, somebody just give me a ready when you're when you're good to go. Um, and then we'll turn this into, into a pattern. All right, awesome. Everybody's got a button at least. Um, Hopefully some of you have done some interesting things instead of just going joining on social media. Um, whenever I am building things like this, my, my examples are always way less boring than that, but uh, I can't use that when I'm doing a workshop. Okay, so I want to now register this as a pattern, and this is where I need to start writing some code. So if you've got this um, block patterns uh, handbook document open, which Catherine shared um, earlier on, so it's the second one that she shared in the group of lists. If I can ask Catherine just to share that URL again. You'll see the second paragraph talks, talks about there being two ways to register a pattern. You can either register patterns in the patterns folder, which we're going to do in a minute, or you can use the register block pattern function, um, and that you can do in PHP. Now, this is perfect for if you're registering a pattern in a plugin and you want to distribute that in a plugin. Um, the downside to registering patterns is that you have to register the pattern, or at least you have to copy the pattern code, the block code, as a string. Um, and that makes it a bit wonky uh, inside of a string. But I want to show you how that works first, and then we'll move on to doing it in, in files. So I'm going to scroll down here, and we're going to jump past the patterns directory option, and we're going to go right down to PHP registration. And just below that, you'll see there's an example. Uh, it's calling the register block pattern function, and then there's a theme slug, my awesome pattern, all of that. I want you to copy that code out and have it in your clipboard. Now, I mentioned earlier that this is perfect for doing in plugins, but we're not going to do it in plugin today. We're going to do it in our theme, just so that everything is in the same space. So keep that document open, switch over to your code editor, whichever editor you're using, or just go to a folder directory and right click and open the text editor. Um, and in your theme, so in the root of your theme, I want you to create a functions.php file, just like you would in a classic theme. So in Visual Code Studio, I select the theme name, I right click and I say new file, and I go functions.php. And there is my empty functions.php file. Um, and then the only other thing you need to do in there is you need to open up the PHP opening tag. So it's a smaller than sign, a question mark, and PHP. Okay, I'm going to take a break there and ask somebody just to give me a ready when they've got all of that up and running, uh, and then we'll move on.
I just wanted to mention that I noticed my colleague Sarah joining earlier because she put a camera on. So hi, Sarah. And yes, I stole this waiting for people to say a ready thing from you. <laughs> okay, so you've got your functions.php file going. Now we're going to paste that code from the doc. So this is my favorite way of writing code, taking a sample from somewhere, sticking it in my file, and then editing it as I need to do. Um, there's a lot of jokes around you know, using Stack Overflow to write code. I'm sure we've all seen the memes. But this is how developers work. We find code examples, we put them in files, and then we change them as we need to. So I'm going to copy that out, and I'm going to pop back over to my PHP file, and I'm going to paste that code down over here. OK, so let's walk through what this is doing. <laughs> it's not cheating if it works, right? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so register block pattern is the, is the function that registers the pattern. Um, and then it requires some information. The first, the first uh, string that it requires is the name of the pattern. And the name is in the format of the theme slug, which is usually just the, the lowercase file name of the directory, slash in the name of the pattern. Um, and so what that does is that allows the pattern to be registered specifically to the theme. Um, it's not something that actually matters in the background. It's just easier to, to manage. So let's say Catherine, for example, had Catherine's theme. And I have my theme, and Catherine registers a, a pattern called my awesome pattern, and I register a pattern called my awesome pattern. At least this way, Catherine's slug and my slug will be different, so it creates some, some uniqueness. So I'm going to update my slug, and I'm going to just pop it through John, John blank theme, exactly the same as the folder name. I keep pointing at my screen like everybody's here with me. Um, it's exactly the same as my folder name. And then for my pattern name, I'm just going to call it social hyphen button. So it's all one word in a string. Okay. Then there's an array of data. Um, and the only important pieces of information here are the title, the description, and the content. I'm going to ask you all to uh, ignore categories for now. Don't remove it. We're gonna, we're gonna update it just now, but don't worry about it for now because we're gonna deal with how categories work in a second. Um, but the title is literally just the title of the, of the pattern as it appears in the editor. Um, so I'm just gonna call this social buttons. You'll notice that the, the code is using WordPress translation functions. If you've never seen them before, don't stress. It's just a way of making your theme code translatable. You can, if you want to, uh, if, you don't, if you're not worried about translations, you could just have a plain string in whatever language you're in. So I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Um, then there's a description. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna remove all of this. I'm gonna keep it very simple for the purposes of this workshop. Um, I'm gonna leave that out over there. And I'm just going to call it, copy that over, and I'm going to say a social button, keeping it very simple today. Um, then for categories, all I want you to do is make the categories buttons for now, because this is it's going to add it to the buttons category. And I'll show you how those categories work in a second, but for now, just add it to buttons. And then I want you to delete everything in the content string. Um, so you should end up with something like that. You'll have register your block pattern function, your theme slug slash your button name, and then the array with the title, description, categories, and content. It should look like that. Um, each one should have quotes around it because they are strings, and there should be a comma at the end because it's an array. Uh, I'm going to take a pause there, let anybody who needs to catch up, and then somebody give me a ready when you're good to go, and I'm going to scan and see if there are any questions I need to deal with. So Carl is ready. Everybody seems good to go, so that's great. Now, this is where my personal um, dislike for registering patterns in PHP file comes in. Because what I now have to do, and you saw it earlier from the code, is I now have to put the block markup code inside this as a string, OK? Um, so to do that, I need to go into the editor. I need to switch to the code editor view, which I have to do anyway. Copy the block markup code out and paste it in here. And I'm going to do that now, and I'm going to show you what it looks like, and you'll see why it's not my favorite thing to do. Um, so I'm going to switch over to my to my site. Uh, for those of you, if there's anybody still catching up, I will slow down if you want to, um, if you need to catch up. And I'm going to, on the far right of the editor, there's a, there's a little options, um, three dots. It's next to the view, save, setting styles, buttons. There's one that says options. 
and I can enable the code editor. Or you can use this the Shift Option Command M uh, keyboard combination if you're on a Mac. I don't know what it is on Windows. Um, so open it up and 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 open up the code. And then the group that I'm taking is the second group over here. So I'm ignoring the header and the footer, but I'm grabbing all of this code out over here. I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to close the editor. And then I'm going to switch back to my, my code editor view, my actual code editor, not the site editor code editor, and I'm going to hit paste. And that's what I end up with. Now, as somebody who works with uh, coding styles and somebody who likes indenting their code, their CSS code, their HTML code, their PHP code, and has done so for the last 15 odd years, I look at that and a little bit of me dies inside. <laughs> um, and this is the downside to registering a pattern this way, because there is no, there is, there is a way to, to put the pattern somewhere else in a plugin and include it, but it's not really simple to do. We're not going to do it today. Uh, maybe in a future session, session, I can show you how that works. But this simple way of doing things is a little bit untidy, in my opinion. So what I generally do now is I sit, because, because this isn't a string, I can't use, those of you who know, um, code editors will have auto formatting options. So it'll detect what language you're writing in, and then you can use a keyboard combination, it'll do the indentation for you. But you can't do that inside of a string. Um, so one thing you can do is you can copy this out into like a separate HTML file, indent it there and then put it back in here. Or you can do the kind of thing that I tend to do, and you can sit and indent it yourself. So I'm gonna just use the tab uh, on my keyboard and I'm just gonna basically make this a little bit tidier. Um, this is something that I am super pedantic about on a personal level because I find it just makes it so much easier to read when I do this. Um, it's a little bit difficult to see because of the size of my screen. Normally my screen is a little bit smaller. Uh, but if I do that there, and then I can pop the button, uh, opening button there and the div there, and I can put the closing div there, and that's buttons there, and then the closing div goes with that. And I'm the kind of person that actually sits and does this. Um, I'm a little bit weird that way. Uh, but that just gives me a little bit of a better layout structure. I can see what's going on. Uh, that div belongs to that. That can be indented a bit. Uh, this one can come back a bit. And there we go. And that, to me, is just a little bit more readable. Um, now, obviously, the rest of the code is kind of going off screen, so it's kind of hard to see. Um, but I just find that personally a little bit more readable. If you're still busy doing that, let me know. Uh, if you need me to pause while you're catching up on all of that. Uh, you're happy just to paste it as it was when you saw it earlier. It'll still all work, uh, as long as you have your closing uh, quote mark there and your closing bracket. Um, and I'm going to check if there are any questions that that I need to deal with. Tristan says you could you could do a file read to a variable. Yes, there, there are ways to do it. You could use PHP's include as well. There are other options. Um, Jeremy says, do you sometimes register patterns as plain files with metadata in comments? That's yeah. So that's what we're going to talk about in a second, and I'll show you I'll show you all how that works in a sec. Um, Sarah says, I managed to copy and paste the wrong thing, but I think I've got out now. That's excellent. Um, if you just copy and pasted the example from the document, that would also work. So if you feel like your code is not working, uh, feel free to just grab, uh, where is it now? This is where Zoom fails me because the video is over my toolbar, so I can't see what I'm doing. Um, you can just also grab this code as is, and then just change the, the slug and the my awesome pattern part and leave the rest as is, and that'll give you a similar a similar example. Um, you won't be using the pattern, the, the, the block code from your from your editor, but you'll be using some other block code. Um, Science says copy paste is done. I like it. He's ready. Um, Tristan says, do you indent for input or output? I'm not even indenting for either. I'm just indenting for my own sanity. <laughs> um, that's the thing. On the output side, often the indentation, all of this white space, because it's in a string, will actually go away. Um, and whenever I view the source, in a browser, there's tools that you can use to indent that anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm just, this is just literally a personal bug of mine. Um, I'll, I'll share the story. Um, a colleague of mine who's preparing a, a workshop on user roles. <clears throat> and in one of their slides, they had a PHP function to set up a new role and some new capabilities. And instantly I could see that the indentation was out. So I just had to let them notice I'm just going to fix your indentation. Um, it's one of those, it's one of those little personal things. 
<clears throat> okay, so I think everybody's caught up. We've had a couple of I'm readies and ready to go. So now let's see this in play. So if everything works and I switch back to my editor and I refresh it, I should now be able to add that pattern. So the way you add patterns, I'm just going to remove the query string again. Oh, sorry, not the query string, the query loop. Um, there we go. And I'm going to say, ah, video is in my way again. Go away video. I'm going to say insert after. And then if I click on the add, the toggle block inserter button, I have options to add blocks or patterns. So if you've never seen patterns before, this is what patterns look like. All of these patterns that are loading here are pulled from either WordPress core or the pattern directory, which I'll show you where that is and how that works in a sec. Um, but if you click on the drop down, and if you remember the category we added it to was buttons, and you click on buttons, you should now see in the list there, you should see your social button. Um, is anybody not seeing their button in the list of buttons in the pattern list? Okay, Sarah says it works. Catherine says, yay. Uh, Adrian says no. Okay. Um, let's see if anybody else is stuck. Um, okay, so folks aren't seeing it. Have you refreshed the editor so that it's reread all your theme code? Step one. Yeah, you have refreshed. Um, okay, so let's go back to the code. Um, those of you who aren't seeing your your, I had not changed my theme to the right one. Okay, so if you hadn't activated the new theme that we're working in, make sure that's active. Um, if anybody else has done those steps and they're still not seeing it, maybe you can paste your, your register block pattern code in your functions.php and we can see if there's any problems with it. Uh, but yeah, make sure that the, the theme you created is active and that's the theme you're working in where you created the functions.php. I have a feeling I may have skipped that step, so I apologize. <laughs> um, I'll take a pause there. And if anybody wants to share their code, they're more than welcome to. They can just paste it into the chat and we'll see. Okay, the refresh that word, yes. So whenever you're writing code in your theme, you need to refresh your browser. Um, Sarah said, I forgot to save in my text editor. Yes, that's another one. I, I have my text editor set to automatically save any changes I make. Another little little lazy hack. If, you, if you're using Visual Code Studio or PHP Storm, you can set them to do that. Um, Sergio, category buttons, yes. The category was buttons. Um, that's awesome. Okay, if you want to share code, you can pop into Pastebin, might be easier. Okay, Sarah forgot to write PHP at the very top, excellent. Uh, so that's another thing that might have been missed. So is there anybody else that's still not seeing their pattern? If you are, please let us know. Um, otherwise we will, we will move on. I'm not seeing anybody mention that they are stuck. So it seems that we've resolved all the problems. Um, so just to recap, yes, make sure your PHP file, your functions.php is inside of the active theme that you're working on. Make sure that you have the opening PHP tag that is required. Um, things like your categories, make sure it's buttons, not button. Uh, and then make sure you have refreshed your editor using the browser refresh tool or whatever the case may be. Um, and then it should, it should show up. Make sure there are no blank lines before PHP. That, that's another good one, yes. Um, it must always be the first thing in that file. So no spaces before it, no blank lines, anything like that. Okay, I don't see anybody saying they're stuck. So I'm going to assume that everybody's good to go. If you are still stuck, perfectly let us know in the chat. Otherwise, we will move on. So what I want to do now is I want to show you what happens when I add this pattern. So over here where I'm going to add a block, if I just click on the socials, button pattern. It just adds the pattern as to be expected. But you'll notice that when I switch to the list view, it's added the pattern as it existed in the code. So it's added, it hasn't added like a special pattern block like we do with template parts, has a special header template part block, and then it contains the, the template part content. It just takes that code and just inserts it. In. Um, so if I make a change to this, these blocks in this template, it doesn't, it doesn't affect anywhere else this pattern is used. If I make a change in the code, it doesn't affect this usage of the pattern. And that's where it's different to reusable blocks. So patterns are more something that you would enable 
for folks to be able to insert something that they want in their site and then maybe customize it to their needs. So for example, this is a good example. Um, somebody might want to be insert the social media pattern and then change it to Twitter or Facebook or whatever they want for wherever they want on the page. So it's more just giving users kind of predefined designs, predefined elements that they can use wherever they want on their site. Okay, so that is registering a pattern in PHP. Um, you can, yes, or, or making a, a post in template. Um, you can do you can do this in plugins. You can do this in themes. We did it in the functions.php today, which is fine, but we could register that in a plugin. So earlier on, I mentioned um, that when we click on insert, sorry, let me just go back here and here, um, and we and we enable the patterns list. All of these patterns are being loaded from somewhere. So there is something called the block pattern directory. Um, and this is something that exists on the WordPress.org website. So it's similar to how you would install plugins and how you would install themes. And this is one of the things that I love about patterns because this is folks who are creating patterns, contributing free patterns that you can install, that your clients can install. Um, so you can have, for example, this person has created a link in bio pattern that you can just insert into your site. Um, they are different portfolio patterns. So it's almost like a great way of the sort of global repository of templates, if you will, or reusable content that you could just use to build or create or whatever the case may be. Um, now the pattern directory can be disabled. You can disable it if you want to for a site. We're going to dive into that in a second. Um, but it's useful if you're learning to build block themes and you're looking for how to achieve certain things and you've never done it before. Uh, so I'm going to just insert a pattern from the pattern directory. Uh, so let's go with let's go with a column. Some of what's in the column. So let's find a column of things. There's a pricing table. Let's install a pricing table. Um, and as you see, as we mentioned earlier, what this does is it just takes the pattern content and just inserts it. Now I can use this and I can change the headings and I can change the pricing and I can change the colors in the background. And this for me is perfect because I'm not a designer. I'm not a person who can think about different colors and layouts and, and things like that. I'm, I'm a code guy. Um, so this is great because now I can use these patterns that have been contributed, just like I would use plugins or I'd use themes and I can build, I can use this in templates. I can use it in posts or pages or wherever the case may be. Okay, so that's the pattern directory. So I'm gonna just check my notes quickly because I've forgotten what my next objective was. Oh yes, so we wanna create and use a custom footer pattern. Um, cool, let's do that. Jimmy says, what on the screen right now is a pattern? Um, which one was that? This one. Oh, wait, hang on. I think you meant this one. The, the pricing, did you mean the pricing, Jimmy? Yes, yes, so that was a pattern. So let me show you what I did there. I'm gonna remove this. So I went and I said, right, I want to insert something after these patterns. Um, I click on the inserter and then I just searched for in the columns category and I went and there was the pricing table pattern. So that's sitting in the block pattern directory somewhere. Some other awesome person has created it for me and I just literally click on it and boom, it comes in. So I didn't have to go design that. I didn't have to go think about it and I can now just change the, the content as I need to. Um, awesome. The button is Twitter. Then. The button was so the button was my social um, button that I created, my social pattern, and I just changed it to be Twitter. I could make it Facebook. I could make it whatever I want. Um, I just use it as an example. I hope that answers your question. Okie dokie. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back over here. Um. So there was, I'm trying to, I'm actually not going to do the custom footer pattern today. Um, and I'll tell you why, because it meant to be a header pattern. <laughs> um, <laughs> I forgot what I was doing. So I'm gonna create a header pattern, so I apologize. So I'm gonna talk you through why I might create a custom header pattern and why I'm doing it for the purposes of today. But let's say for my, let's remove the, the pricing table here. And let's move the video out there. So let's say for my site design, um, let's say I want to have in my temp, in my theme, I'm busy developing a theme for 
a client or for distribution or whatever the case may be. And I want my header to look a lot different than what it does now. Um, and one of the things that I might want to do is I want to add a image. So I'm going to add an image block. Uh, actually, i uh, sorry, not an image block, a cover block. Now, if you've never seen a cover block before, um, I'm going to show you what it looks like now. So let's just go and find, I've got a, a picture of water here somewhere. Um, there we go. I'll step through this in a second with you. But a club, cover block is basically a cool block that has a background image and then a title across the front. So if you're following along with me, I'm going to remove all of this so we can start all over again. Um, so let's remove the cover. So we've got the group that we added, the, the, the social button or the whatever button. And then I'm going to insert inside of the header. So I'm using the list view to open up the header template part. And I'm going to insert either before or after, it doesn't matter because we're going to remove everything else. And I'm going to add a cover block. Now there's multiple ways you can do it. You can either click on the plus button and search for cover block that way, or you can use the forward slash start, start uh, shortcut and type in cover, and it'll then bring up the cover block. Once you've done that, you can either upload an image or use an image from your media library. Um, I think I've already uploaded it, so I'm going to just check. It should be in my media library. Yes, there it is. So let's use that one, for example. So it's upload or select an image if you have one. Um, if you don't have one, there are many places you can find them. You can go to Pixels, for example, or you can go to Openverse, which is something that is a WordPress project for uploading of images. You can go grab one there. Um, and then we're just going to give it a type. And I'm just going to say... Uh, my header. And because I can't really see it on my image, I'm going to take that and I'm going to change the text color to white. So there's my header. And I'm going to move that above the site title and the site logo. Okay. Um, so if you're still in the process of finding an image and those kind of things, um, please take your time now. Um, and then if somebody can let me know once they've got their cover block with some text, above the, the, the header that, that exists in the, in the header template part, then we will, we will move on from there. If Adrian's got it, that's great. Um, I'll, wait, I'll wait a few more moments for anybody else who wants to, wants to let me know. Uh, no problem. Take your time, Sarah. While we're while we're doing that, for those of you who are there ready, um, start thinking about how you would get this code. So you would you would open up the code editor view and you would find the header template part and you would copy that code. Uh, maybe get that part ready. Think about where you would put it, um, and then I'll go through the the steps in a, in a second. This is always where I was thinking about it. It would be nice to have like elevated music in the background. <laughs> uh, was that the Girl of Ipanema song? <laughs> That's the famous one. All right. So whatever, however you've done it, whatever image you've added, whatever text you've added, that doesn't matter today. Well, hopefully you've got the cover block there. Uh, hopefully you've got an image. Uh, it looks like the cover image comes with a black opacity. That does seem to be the case. Um, you can, I believe, change that. We're not going to worry about that today. We, all we're doing is adding the important part to today is really adding the image because that's required for the next step. Um, so, so if you're still searching for an image, that's also fine. Um, we'll take another break later if you need to catch up. It's all good. Um, if I switch to my code editor view now, there's my template part. And I can't see the cover block that I've added because I've added it to the template part. WordPress is clever enough to say, but hang on, you're editing the header template part. You want that code to be in the header template part. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit save and it'll say, do you want to save the index? And do you want to save the header? Yes, I want to save both, please. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to toggle my navigation. I'm going to go to my template parts. I'm going to find header and I'm going to open up the header template part. And if the code editor is still enabled, I'm going to exit it because I want to see there my cover template is. Now, what's interesting about this process is you could have done it in the template editor inside the header template part, 
or you could have gone to the actual template part itself and added it there. It doesn't matter. WordPress is clever enough to figure that out. So there's multiple ways to achieve the same goal. Now what's cool about this is when I view the code view here, I just see the code for the header template, which is perfect. Okay. So what I want to do now is I just want to grab the cover block that we've added. So it's this code right at the top of the header template. So it starts with the WP cover comment and ends with the WP cover comment. And then you'll see below that is the header group that was there before and all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to grab that code. Now, if you remember from the documentation we looked at earlier, um, there are two ways to register patterns. The one way is in PHP. The other way is just to create a file in a patterns folder in your theme. And that's what we're going to do now. And to me, this is a lot cleaner and a lot neater. It's only available to the theme. And so that's why I would argue that patterns should belong to a theme, um, unless you're loading them up into the, into the pattern directory or you're creating it for a specific plugin. But generally, if you're thinking about building patterns and you're building a theme, a good place for them to live is with the theme because they generally belong to the layout and the, and the structure of the theme. And the cool thing about this is all we have to do is inside of the theme directory, in code, I go right-click and I say new folder. And I say patterns. And then I create my pattern file. Now, the difference between block templates and block template parts is pattern files are also PHP files, just like functions PHP was. So I create a new file and I give my pattern file a name. And I'm just going to literally call it cover-block.php. And then because it's a PHP file, as we learned earlier, we need to open it up with the opening PHP tag. So it's that. PHP. And here is where we can do, I can't remember who asked about it earlier, but somebody was asking earlier about having some kind of header comment. This is where you can do that. So for now, I want you to close that PHP tag. So just like I've done there, open it like that. Uh, create less than question mark PHP. And then on the very next line, question mark, sorry, less than greater than. So it closes the PHP tag. And then you can paste your, your cover block markup directly below that. Um, and what's cool about this is if I'm using a text editor that has built-in indentation, um, I can, hang on, what have I just done here? I can actually implement that. It's not working now for a second because I'm probably using the wrong keyboard combination. I can't remember what it is, but I can do the automatic indentation. It looks so much neater in time. Now, the other thing that you need for a pattern to work, and let's go back to the documentation is if you look at this example, it has, and this is very similar to what we've seen in plugins, what we've seen in themes in, this, in the style.css file, there is, a, there is a pattern header that you need to implement. So in the documentation where it talks about using the patterns directory to register patterns, there is an example. I want you to grab that code, that header comment area, and put that at the top of your pattern inside of those PHP tags. And once your, your pattern file looks something like this, you've got your, your header, PHP open, header comments, close tag, and then your block code. Somebody hit me up with a ready to go, and then we'll move on from there. While I figure out what the shortcut is to indent this code. <laughs> Working for some reason. This is what happens when you use a tool that you don't use every day. Give me the header code is from the um, documentation on block patterns in the theme developer handbook. I will copy that link out now for you. And it's under the section using the patterns directory to register patterns. And this is why I started uh, assigning an hour and a half to these sessions because they start, they start requiring a little bit more time. <laughs> Okay, Adrian is ready. That's great. Carl is ready. That's great. Um, I'll leave it on for a little bit longer before we carry on. Sarah is ready in theory. We'll, we'll see what the theory and the practice is in a second. Okay. 
I think I'm going to stick with three readies before I move on. So we've got three, so that's good. So just as we did earlier when we registered it in PHP, we had to set the title, the description, the categories, and the content. Okay, The content's taken care of. Done. We don't have to worry about that content string because it's just the, the block markup content in the file. The title, the categories, we need to set. The slug, we also need to set. Now, you'll see the slight difference here is that the slug is set as the first variable. It's not set in the array under slug when we register it in PHP. But in the header part, in a, in a file, we have to register the slug that way. So that's the slight difference in the two. But otherwise, the rest is pretty much the same. So as we did before, let's give it a title. So in this case, I'll just say cover block. Um, we'll do the same theme slug. So in my case, John blank theme. And we'll give it the same name as the file. So in my case, you'll see over here, it's cover hyphen block. So I'm going to just say cover hyphen block. Now, in terms of categories, we can't say buttons this time because <laughs> it's not a button. Um, but if we pop over to the editor and we have a look at what patterns are available, what categories are available, um, there's featured buttons, columns, gallery headers, which is probably a good one, uh, text or query. Okay. Now I did check before I, I saw that question, Sergio, and I will get to it. Um, I did check before the session. Unfortunately, the, ca the categories are not listed anywhere. Um, but there is a way you can find out is if you open up WordPress code, I'm going to show this to you now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to suggest you do this yourselves. And I think it's in the, um, actually, we'll, we'll do it later, but there is a way you can check. I'll show you how to check later what the different categories are. But for the purpose of today, I just want you to add it to the header category. Now, this is an area where I almost want to, sometimes open source is great and sometimes open source isn't great. So a little, little tip here. The buttons category, the category name that's stored in the database is buttons. So you would think that the headers category would be stored as headers, and you should say headers, wouldn't you? And, and that's wrong. It's header. <laughs> I discovered this the hard way. Um, so make your categories header, not headers. Um, block types you don't need. So we're going to remove that. That's just descriptive. Um, and viewport width you also don't need, so we're going to remove that. But the three that you do need is the title, the slug, and the category or categories that it belongs to. Uh, if you want to do it in multiple categories, you just comma separate them. So you could say header, comma, buttons, for example. We're not going to add it to buttons for now. Um, we'll leave it as header. And that is basically the, the, the patterns directory, the file way of registering a pattern. Now, what I prefer, what I like about this is I find this imminently re more readable as to what the title is and what the slug is and what the categories are. And I find this imminently more readable if I can just indent it, which I can't now, to automatically indent it and move forward. So make sure you save this file. Uh, it should be in the patterns directory. It should be a PHP file. The cool thing is WordPress will just read the patterns directory and pick up any patterns that are there. And if they contain valid markup, they should work. So if you switch back to the editor now and you refresh your browser so that the editor refreshes, uh, and let's go back into the index template. And actually, what would be a good thing to do now would be to remove the one that we've saved. And there's an easy way to do that. So go back into your template parts, open up your header template. And if you click on the little drop down button next to the header uh, in the top there, you can say clear all customization. So that will remove this code that was stored in the database. So your header should go back to normal. So your header should end up looking something like this. I'm going to pause there and make sure everybody is caught up to this. And if somebody can just give me a couple of readies. Adrian's ready. Can I get two more? Sergio's ready. Excellent. And Sarah is with me so far. <laughs> I like the positivity, Sarah. <laughs> okay. So now if I switch the list view on and I'm going to insert it before my group, so I'm going to say insert before, and I'm going to click on the insert block and I'm going to enable patterns. And if I go to the drop down and go to, we said it was headers. I should see my pattern here somewhere. And there's cover block. Now it looks like I copied the code incorrectly. Um, so I'm seeing my, my buttons, uh, but some of you should be seeing um, your cover pattern. Um, Catherine says, it looks like the button code may have been saved into the new pattern instead of the cover. Yes, it looks like it. 
Um, but some of you, instead of, it looks like I made a mess up and I saved the button code. Um, so yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> but some of you should be seeing your cover blocks now. So let me know if you've got your cover. Awesome. Carl has his cover. Uh, I'm going to just carry on and put my put my my failed cover block in there just for the sake of fun. Um, but some of you should see it. I can see mine. Awesome. It also wants me to attempt block recovery. So attempt block recovery means there's a bug in your code somewhere. Um, so you might need to have a look at, at what's gone wrong. Um, if you if you want, we can we can troubleshoot it later. But if you see a temp uh, uh, um, attempt block recovery in your in your in your pattern in the pattern list, there's a bug somewhere in that code. Um, it seems it does not need to be added to the header, even if it's a header type. Yes, it doesn't matter. The pattern can be added. Anyway. So while folks are getting their patterns going, I'm very quickly going to remove this and recreate my cover block because I need it for my next part of this. So give me one second. So remove. I'm going to insert a cover. I'm going to just redo the whole thing. And what's kind of cool about this is you can actually see me now doing it from the, the header part. So it doesn't matter where I am. Uh, let's just change the text. And what's also cool about this is I can now, at this point, and I've saved nothing, I can switch to the code editor, grab the cover code, switch back to my file, paste the block markup, save the file. Don't save anything here. Refresh this so that it's all back to the way it was. And now I should be able to, uh, why did it save it? Okay, well, let's go remove. Here we go. And then let's add the pattern. So we say insert before and we add a pattern. Oh, I'm searching for pattern inside blocks, silly boy. And let's go down to headers. And there's my cover block. So now I'm adding my cover block. Excellent. So that's all worked. Okay, great. So everybody seems to be caught up, which is excellent. Now, Sergio asked earlier, can we register our own categories? And the answer is yes. And I would definitely recommend doing that. So if we switch back to that article we were looking at earlier, there is a section on categories um, and how to register them. And if you have a look at this um, sort of table of contents down the right-hand side here, there is a section on registering a custom pattern category. So if you click on that, it'll take you to this part in the code, registering a custom pattern category. And what's cool about that is you can now register a category specific to your theme. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to register John's block category for my patterns. And then I'm going to apply my patterns to my category. So it makes it much easier for my user to insert those patterns for me. So if we grab this code out over here, and we switch back to code and we put it in our functions to switch over to our functions.php file where we registered the buttons earlier. Um, and then it doesn't matter where you do it. I'm going to just do it at the top of my file, but you can do it at the bottom as well if you want. I'm going to just pop that code in. And let's work, work through what it's doing. So first of all, it's checking, does the function exist? And if it, if it, if it does exist, then use it to register a category. And that's handy for if you're putting it in a plugin somewhere and you're hooked into something in the wrong place, it's a good way to do that. So it's calling the register pattern category function. I need to pass it a slug. So that's what it stores in the database. And I'm just going to call this John's or John blank uh, theme patterns. You can call it whatever you want as long as it's one word. So if, it, if you want to have separation, use a hyphen, uh, ideally all lowercase. Uh, this can be done in plugins as well. Correct. You can do this in plugins as well. And then for the label, I'm just going to call it, take out all the translation stuff. Um, I'm just going to call it uh, John blank theme patterns. So that's the English or the, whatever your language is version, or you can make it translatable. That's up to you. Uh, pro tip, try and make your strings translatable as much as you can. I'm keeping it super simple for today. Now I want to make sure that all of my patterns that I've registered belong to that category. So I'm going to take that category out, the slug, and wherever I've registered my patterns, so this one, I'm going to change this category to the new category that I've registered. And I'm going to go back to my cover block pattern file, and I'm going to change the category here as well. Okay. Um, so first of all, you register your pattern. Sorry, you register your pattern category, give it a slug and a label, and then change 
your current patterns. So the one that you did in PHP, it was buttons, change it to your new pattern, and then go to your cover block and change the categories there from header to your new pattern. And then if I can get a couple of readies, we will see how all this works. Jonathan, maybe you can confirm what I, <laughs> the question I just mm. answered. So Sergio was asking if this part, the new function you just added, if this could be done in a plugin as well. And yes. I said yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. So every everything that I've done, so here's a little interesting piece of knowledge, but everything you do in a functions.php file is effectively working the same as a plugin. Um, so anything that you can do in functions.php, you can separate into a plugin. So I could take all of this code, if I wanted, let's say I wanted to bundle my social plugins, so I'm building, I'm building a, a plugins, a social buttons plugin that I want to sell. And I want to have blocks and patterns and various things. I could do all of this in a plugin, package it up, and off I go. Uh, absolutely. <clears throat> the other thing you'll notice as well, while folks are letting me know that they're ready, you'll notice that I'm, those of you who understand how WordPress development works, I'm not having to worry about hooking into any action or uh, action hooks or filter hooks. Um, because the, the functions themselves, the block pattern category function and the block pattern function um, will register the things in the right place. So I don't need to hook into the init or anything else. By calling those functions, it'll all hook into the right place and I don't have to worry about anything else. Okay, so I've got a couple of readies. Um, let's see how all this works. So I'm going to switch back to make sure all that's saved, switch back to my editor. I'm then going to refresh the uh, site editor again. And I'm going to go somewhere, it doesn't matter where, I'm just gonna switch over to my templates because I find the templates slightly easier to edit. And I'm going to just clear any customizations. So that that's all good. And you'll notice that, uh, actually let's go to the template header, template part header as well, and just clear customizations there. So we go back to scratch, that's excellent. And if we go now into the index template, for example, um, and enable the list view, if I now go and insert something and I go to the patterns and I click on the drop down, there's my category. So now all of my custom patterns are available in that one category. Um, Sarah's getting all excited because it works. That's great. Um, so now I can just tell my user, my customer, my whatever, if you want my custom patterns that I've developed, especially for you that I'm charging you large amounts of money for, you click on that option. There they are. You insert them and off you go. Okay, is there anybody who's not seeing their custom category with their custom patterns added to their custom category? Please let me know. Um, otherwise, we will move on. Yeah, Adrian's with Sarah. That's excellent. Um, <clears throat> Sergio asks, yeah, Sergio's along. He says, I assume categories can be hidden. Yes, we're going to cover that towards the end um, because I want to make sure we do the next thing first. And if we run out of time, I'll just talk you through the code, but we won't actually do it because it's actually fairly simple-ish um, or fairly straightforward, should I say. It's, but what we're going to do first is a little bit more complicated. Um, so yes, we'll get to hiding categories in a second. Um, awesome. So Sarah's up and running. Sergio's good. Adrian's good. Everybody's happy. Awesome. Great. I like that. <laughs> that makes me happy. Um, for those of you who don't, who don't know, when I, when I first started doing these, I, I used to stress about not being able to have that interactivity with folks and, and, and knowing that folks are, you know, along for the ride. So it's nice to hear that everything's working perfectly. Okay, so why did I create this cover block with this image? Well, let's think about this. Currently, the image that I've added to this block is sitting where? It's sitting in the media library, okay? So let's have a look at the code and see what that means. So let's switch back over to the cover block file. And let's just, I'm going to, please forgive me, but I'm going to just zoom out for a second so that we can all see, uh, I can't zoom now. Oh, wait, it's, it's minus, yeah. So I apologize if the text is a bit small, but I need to be able to do this so we can see what's going on here. Um, I'm just gonna move the image over and I'm going to move the div over just so it's a little bit tidier. Okay, <clears throat> so you'll see that the cover block code contains a URL and the URL is currently pointing to my site. And this is a typical WordPress functionality. This is how WordPress links to funds, the full path. That's not ideal because if I wanted to bundle this as a theme and allow my user or my client or whoever to install it on their site, 
learnpress.test needs to be accessible to their sites. Otherwise, they don't, they don't have the image uh, installed. What would be better is if there was a way that I could reference a file inside of my theme. And so that wherever this cover block is being used, that image gets, gets inserted by default. And then if the user decides to change an image to one that they want to use from their media library, that's fine. But when it first gets loaded, I need to make sure it's, it's available and visible. Thanks for coming, Carl. And there is a way to do that. And that's where the fact that cover blocks are PHP files and or PHP code comes in handy because now I can use WordPress core uh, functionality to call the, the URL to my theme and just add or append or concatenate the image path to it. So I'm gonna slowly walk you through this process. If you wanna follow along with me, that's cool. Or we can do it later and while I can wait, but here's what I'm going to do. First step is I need to put the image in the theme somewhere. Um, there is no requirement for where you put it, but common best practice is to create a folder in your theme called assets. Uh, and this is not really a WordPress, page, but this is generally what web developers do. They create an assets directory. And then any assets like CSS or JavaScript or images or audio files or whatever generally sit in that directory. And then what I like to do and what a lot of other folks like to do is inside of assets, I like to create an images directory. So you've got assets slash images and then all images that you need for your theme go in there. The next step is to copy the actual image over. So we're gonna do that next. So I keep my images in a folder called pictures samples. Um, if I can find samples, there's some breakfast stuff. I wonder what's in there. Um, so I just have sample images sitting in my samples directory. Uh, and I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a different water now, not one now so we can see it working. You can use the same image if you want or any other image. And then you're gonna go into the site that you're working on. So in this case, mine is LearnPress. You're going to go inside of your theme directory. And there's the blank theme we're working with. There's the assets, there's the images, and I'm gonna pop it in. Okay, so we've got the image installed in the theme directory. When we export it or, or copy it or zip it or whatever, it's going to be there. Now we need to reference that image. And the documentation is quite useful in that it actually gives you some code on how that works. So you'll see right down the so, bottom here, I think it was. Um, sorry, did somebody have a question? No question, okay, cool. Um, one of these actually shows you, there we go, linking assets. So if you scroll a little bit higher up, there's an option on linking assets, for example, images using get theme file URI. So you can see whoever wrote this documentation knew that we want to do this. Um, okay, I'm gonna pause for a second because Tristan has a question. So go ahead, Tristan. Uh, just just quickly, um, when you're saying this of using the, the, the WordPress other functions, is that where you could add um, custom fields or other fields or, or other bits of information? Is that what if, you're saying? If, effectively, yes. Uh, you, oh, could, wow. you could do anything. Cool. So you could, so right. if you're using, let's say, for example, you're using ACF, advanced custom fields, and you're using the ACF get field to call a field from somewhere, you could do that inside of your pattern. Uh, and I'm going to show you now with the example of the image, but you could any PHP code that you're used to, you could do inside of the pattern. Or, or just a really simple thing like put the latest date for your copyright at the bottom of your page or something like that. Yeah. Perfect example. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that's so, <laughs> I'm, no problem. And I'm glad you mentioned that because that was actually my original idea when I was going to do the footer pattern. I was going to do the copyright date in there with the date um, function call. Because we've all, I'm sure all of us have experienced that every year the client phones up and says, please update my copyright. Um, and you and you can't you can't have use that date function in in, in block patterns uh, block themes, but you can with patterns. Um, but I realized that doing that and the image would just make the workshop way too long. But that's exactly why I was going to do the footer originally. So I'm glad you mentioned it. Um, okay, so the code, the linking images assets code, it uses the get theme file URI call. So if we have a look here, there it is over here. So it's get theme file URI. And you'll notice it passes in the path to the assets images image file. So WordPress does something that I do. It uses assets images, so we can exactly just grab that. So what I'd like you to do if you're here is, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna grab the entire section of code and we'll just take out what we need. So I'm gonna copy that entire block there. I'm gonna switch back over to my, my pattern file and I'm just gonna pop this. I'm gonna put some space in there and just pop it in the bottom here. And then I'm gonna grab you see here where the, the image tag is there, and then there's the, the SRC or the source attributes, and then the PHP tag starts there. So starting from there all the way through to where it ends over there is what I want you to copy. 
Um, and once you've copied that, then we can replace. So if we find the image block in our in our code, and we go past all of this stuff over here, and we find the same SRC attributes, and there's the double quotes, and there's the start of HTTPS learn press and all of that, we're going to replace all of that. Just remembering what the image file is called. In my case, it's water-pattern.jpg. So we'll pop that down there. Um, I'm just going to format a little bit better. And that's good. Uh, and I'm going to. Mm -hmm. While you're formatting, I have a question for you. Um, yes. I noticed that the image class of 66 got popped in there. Um, is it a. Is We're it getting a... there. Okay. We're getting there. Perfect. We're definitely getting there. <laughs> I'm glad you asked because this, this caught me the other day. Um, Okay, so we're going to paste that in over there. So it's get theme file URI. So it's assets, images, and in my case, it was, I can't even remember now, water image, I think it was water hyphen image, and it was a JPEG. Um, and we can check that by going back over here, water, it was water hyphen two, sorry, water hyphen two. That's the actual, so water image was the one from the media library, but I want water two from my assets images. So that's the first change you're going to make. Now, Catherine asks, what about this image class over here? Okay, so. If you've never seen this before, the image class is what's added to a block image based on the ID of the image in the database. In this, in this case, it's ID 66. You'll see this is replicated at the top here in the cover block, ID 66. You have to, have to, have to, have to remove the image class because if you don't, it's going to cause a bug in your code and you're going to see what Sarah saw earlier of the attempt block recovery. Um, and I do I do a live stream um, every Tuesday where I prepare for these workshops. And on Tuesday, you'll if you want to go watch that live stream and laugh at me, I got stuck for about 10, 15 minutes because I couldn't figure out why my pattern wasn't working. It was I forgot to remove that class. So the next thing to remove is remove the class that has the ID attached to it, which is that one over there. And then the last thing you're going to update is the, the URL and the ID up here. You don't need these. Um, so you're going to remove that and that so you're just going to keep the settings the dim ratio which is that opacity which folks were talking about earlier and there is dark setting okay um <laughs> catherine was having some fun and games with my name with my file name <laughs> um and yes sarah you're welcome to go and watch me troubleshoot it it was it was literally me staring at the screen for five minutes going why is that not working <laughs> okay and that's all you have to change now what's cool about this is you can make the link to anything in your theme. So you could have multiple patterns. You could call any PHP functionality you're used to, as Tristan mentioned earlier. You can call meta fields from elsewhere. You can call fields from the rest of your site, whatever the case may be, and it will work. So let's take out this code that we added here. So it's back to being our cover block. We've added the URL, which looks good. We've removed the class and we've removed the URL and things up here. Let's see what this does. Um, I'm going to pause there for a second and just make sure that anybody who needs to catch up can catch up if you are coding along with me. Uh, and if you are coding along, give me a couple of readies and then we'll test and see if this works. I think I think there is one one little discrepancy. There's .jpg in your code, but then the file is and it's, .jpeg. So you can change spot. one. Yeah. Good spot. Can, can you come and sit and watch me code as well, please, and pick up my, <laughs> my bugs? <laughs> Be happy to. It's a little far for me to get. <laughs> do it remotely I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what i learned i learned that um i'll say the hard way but i learned how having somebody watching what you're doing can actually help you find bugs at a previous position i used to do live streams i worked on a plugin called serious simple podcasting and so because it was open source the ceo said sure you can live stream whenever you're working on the plugin when you're fixing bugs or whatever uh, and a couple of times when i was stuck on something and i couldn't see what the obvious thing was somebody else who was on the live stream said hey have you tried this or what about that so yeah i love these these kind of things yeah. Um, cool. Okay. So Adrian's ready. Sergio's ready. Tristan says this is great. Some code I made in the plugin because I need PHP. Exactly. You could do it as a pattern. Absolutely. Cool. So let's see if this does what we expect it to do. So we'll switch back over here. Um, and I'm going to refresh all of this. And now I should see a different image in that pattern. Uh, it should be loading the image from, from the theme. So let's insert a block. Doesn't matter where we insert it. And it was my blank theme patterns. And oh, look at that recovery error, 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 error. Something's gone wrong. Okay. So I've done something wrong. Um, I'm trying to think what that is. Image just was hyphen two. That looks right. Um, 
That is the water image. I wonder if it was just out of thought. I think it might be the URL. I'm not sure about that. I know the ID doesn't need to be there, but maybe the URL does. So let's update that. And if it is that, then we'll, we'll uh, update our code. So I think I need to do this. So I was hoping I wouldn't have to do live debugging today, but apparently I do. Um, so let's pop that in there. And then let's remove this again. And now let's see what happens. Um, refresh. Let's add the pattern. And interesting. Now I'm getting the block, but I'm not getting the image. Jeremy um, had the idea oh, because... to put a slash before. Oh, there it's the JPEG again. <laughs> <laughs> Copied over the JPEG. <laughs> okay. So let's save that. So here we go, live, live debugging, folks. Uh, specifically prepared so this wouldn't happen, and then it happened anyway, but that's fine. Um, so there we go. So there are patterns working. So I was slightly wrong. Uh, you do need to add the URL element in the cover block. So it does need the URL. For some reason, I thought it didn't. I can't remember why. But you need to update those two places. So in the SRC attributes of the image class and the URL attributes of the block code. And make sure that your URL is in quotes, there's a colon, and then open close quotes. And then you can just literally use exactly the same code uh, you can reuse there. If you want to be clever, um, I was like clever, bad choice of words, but if you want to be a little bit sort of, a lot of developers talk about do not repeat yourself. What you could also do is you could do something like this. You could create an image variable and you could say the image variable is equal to uh, this. So escape the URL, get the theme file, get the get the path. And then you could, this is just off the fly, I didn't plan this. Then you could just pop the image variable in there and the image variable in there. Um, and what's nice about that is if you change the path to the image or the image file, you only have to change it in one place. And that still works. So the PHP still works the way it should. Um, so let's test it. If you're following along, don't do this at home, but let's, let's test if this works. Um, so we go there, patterns, and there's my theme pattern. So that's another way that you could that you could do it. Okay. Um, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Is everybody else who is following along seeing their, their custom image? If you are putting your custom image in, are you seeing it in your patterns, um, in your patterns list? Uh, Sergio says, yep, so that's great. Uh, I'm going to insert this pattern now. They have popped it in at the bottom here. Let's move it up a little bit. Um, I'll just put it above here. I'm going to remove this one. So while folks are catching up, I'm just going to do some cleanups. So I'm now I'm using my new pattern, which is great. And then I want to put that pattern inside of my, oh, I've replaced the group. I don't want that. <laughs> so let me clear these customizations. Um, I'm going to go back into my template parts. I'm going to go into the header. I'm going to clear those customizations. And then I'm going to add my pattern into my header. So it looks a little bit better. Uh, da, 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 and, da, 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 and there's blank theme patterns and there's my pattern and there it is in my header so I can save that now excellent okay I, I went very quickly there because that's just me being pedantic about how things are laid out um, so you're all welcome to do that but the idea was that you can at least see your custom pattern with your image from the theme so now when the theme gets installed on the client site um, I will, I will in a second, Adrian, when the theme gets installed on the client site, the, the, the image in that pattern will go along with it, wherever it gets used. And the client can then, once they've installed the pattern, if they don't like the image, they could replace it with their own image or do whatever they want. Tristan, I do see your hand. I'll get to you in a second. Uh, Adrian says, can you show the cover block code again? I must have an error. Sure. Let me do that. Uh, I'll leave that on screen while I chat to Tristan. Tristan, what's up? Uh, it was only just a quick clarification. And before, when you were showing us patterns, they did. If you change the pattern, it didn't change on page because every time you put it into a page, it's like a copy of that pattern. But I think mm -hmm. a little bit when you were changing this pattern, it was changing live, or, or did I misunderstand it? When you put it in the page, can you go and change Once, the file later? And so, it, and it so updates. if you, if, yeah, if you put it in the page and then you mm -hmm. change the file, it's it's as far as I know, it's not going to update. No, right. So it I shouldn't just update sure. the actual page. Um, right. Yeah, it shouldn't update the page because so, whatever gets inserted into the page, that's what's on that page. 
um, right. that that's where so if you want that functionality that's more of a, re a reusable block uh, versus using a pattern thanks, you thanks can actually there's a sure no problem um, if you have a look up Adrian I'm just going to quickly switch off this and I'm going to come back to this but if you have a look at this um, go back to there if you read through this support article comparing patterns template parts and reusable blocks there's actually a lovely little table on there and they show you um the differences and one of the one of the fields is syncing and syncing is if you use it in one place that you make a change there and it changes everywhere else and uh, reusable blocks is the only one that does that okay adrian how are you going is, is did you did you get things working Okay, if you got that error, did, did you include the URL in the top in the cover block here? And did you remove the uh, WP image hyphen with the ID? And did you remove the ID from the cover block? Did the top URL, did that? Would you would you like to grab your, your cover block code and just paste it into the chat quickly? Then we can have a look. I'm gonna just do this quickly. It's the ID. Okay, there we go. So the three things you have to you have to change. You have to change the URLs uh, attributes in the cover block code in the, in, the, in the block markup here. You have to remove the ID, and you have which is which is now not there, and you have to remove the class in the in the image block. And those those two IDs are what often cause because what what those IDs do is it tells WordPress go and look for that image in the media library, and then it can't find it and it throws an error. So you have to remove those things. Um, there's a there's a block theme course that I'm working on where we actually talk about this. And one of the things that they always say is you need to make sure that anything related to IDs in the database aren't there. Um, that might not be a bad idea for a feature that we should request on the Gutenberg repo where there's some way that you can copy the code without the IDs or something. I don't know. Um, but there we go. Okay, so Adrian's got hers working, which is excellent. Yeah. So this is a very quick little insert into this workshop. Um, I forgot to do something when I recorded this workshop. Um, so I'm just very quickly recording it now to add it to the video so it can go on WordPress TV. Uh, it's actually possible to add patterns into your templates and template files via your code editor. So in other words, you can programmatically add them um, and this will include it in the template or template part by default when it's when it's part of the theme. Uh, so what I mean by that is, for example, we were looking at how to, uh, let me pop over here to the editor. Um, and we spoke about the fact that you can in your template part. So we'll pop into the header template part because I'm gonna add that cover block. You can click add and you can search for it in the patterns list. But you can also include it in the header template part by default um, in the code. And if you look at the advanced uh, topics block patterns document we were looking at, there's a section on including block patterns in block theme templates. Um, and you use this WP colon pattern block markup. So I'm going to copy out this top one over here. And I'm going to pop over to my code editor. And I'm going to go into my theme that I was working on. And I'm going to go into my header template part and then above the group block that contains everything, I'm going to include the pattern. Um, and I just need to pass in the slug, which as we know is the theme slug and the cover. So if I go to the cover block, for example, it's going to be John Block theme cover block. And I'm going to stick that in there. Um, and now if I switch back to the editor and I refresh my editor, you should see the cover block, there it is, the cover block is now part of the template part. So this is a very cool way to include custom PHP functionality in your block templates by default, by using patterns. Um, so your pattern contains your PHP code, um, which can do whatever PHP things you need to do, looking up data, querying things, um, getting images, getting video, getting whatever that's part of the theme. And then you can include it in your template or in your template part using this pattern block markup. Uh, so that's very handy for folks who want to be able to have the best of both worlds, um, using, using the block editor to create their templates, saving them as template files, 
um, but they also need to have custom PHP functionality. Uh, you can do that in block patterns, either in um, the PHP registration, which we covered, um, doing it that way, or using the file option. And then you can include those patterns in your template parts or in your templates, and it all just works, uh, which is which is very, very cool. Great, we are running out of time. So I want to just talk through quickly how you can disable um, the categories. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. If you have a look at the uh, block patterns um, uh, handbook doc that I shared with you earlier, and you scroll right down to the bottom here, there's just, just below the registering a custom category section, there is a section on unregistering a, a block pattern category. So you can specifically unregister the categories that you want. And you remember I said to you earlier, I'm gonna show you where the list of registered categories is in the code. So I worked this out the other day. If you wanna see this in the live stream, you can go check it out. But I just did a search for anywhere where they're using register block pattern category uh, in the WordPress core code. And I think it's in WP include. So I'm just gonna find this for you all quickly. Uh, there it is. So it's in a file called block patterns. Um, the file is in um, includes block hyphen patterns.php, and here's the section of code. Um, and if anybody out there is a documentation contributor and they'd like to add this list of galleries somewhere, this category somewhere, please do let me know because I can't stand not finding things in the documentation. Um, but the categories are buttons, columns, featured footers, gallery headers, text, and query. And then here are the slugs that you can use from that list. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to copy this out and paste it in the in the chat so that folks have it in case they're ever needing it. Um, please feel free to play around with your patterns that you've created now and add them to multiple categories and see how they show up. Um, but just as the categories have been registered, you can also unregister specific categories using let me scroll down using the unregistered block pattern category function. Um, you need it to no problem, Tristan. You need to hook your function into an an init hook if you want to do that. So here is the code. You hook it into the init, you create a custom callback function, and then you register your category. Um, you'll see me doing this live in the live stream if you want to check that out. You can also remove theme support for the core block patterns. So that removes all core patterns. Um, and you can also use this should load remote patterns filter to disable all of the patterns from the pattern directory. So I'm going to show you all that quickly. So if I just copy this code as is, I don't expect you to do this with me. But if I put this in my functions.php, um, save that and refresh my editor, when I go to add a pattern, all of the other ones that were coming from the pattern directory no longer exist. All I'm left with are buttons and query. Okay. Um, and then if I wanted to disable um, support for the for the core blocks, the, sorry, the core patterns, I could use this um, unregister. No, not that one. Uh, remove theme support for core block patterns. There is a slight caveat. Um, I haven't been able to successfully do this yet, and I think it might be a bug. <laughs> um, so there's actually, if you want to follow along, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up on this probably tomorrow. Uh, I, I logged this yesterday um, in Gutenberg. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me find it quickly. Um, Deactivating it is deactivated core patterns does not seem to work. And I listed all the things that I did. Uh, and then somebody suggested that maybe I need to set the priority differently. Um, so let's try that quickly. I'm going to grab this code here. Um, because I actually do want to get back to this, this person and answer the question. So I'm trying it with a with a priority of one. Let's see if that does the trick. Uh, so you're now going to help me live debug, live test what I think might be a bug. Um so let's see if it disables those patterns. It does. Okay, so there we go. So if you want to disable the core block patterns, you use this code over here. So add the, the, the your custom action to the init hook. Uh, I should probably call this something like John blank theme, deactivate core patterns, create a custom function called the same name as that, and then just use the remove theme support one, and that'll disable all core patterns. And then if you use the... Um, where is it? I think I deleted it. Um, if you just, so you'll notice that was interesting. I just wanna, sorry, I just wanna go back a step. Uh, let's just do that. So let's do that there. So notice that if I just, I'm gonna comment this out quickly because I'm gonna show you folks what I just discovered live while we were doing a workshop. 
if I just disable the remote block patterns, then the core patterns still work. So if I go to add a pattern, I've still got the buttons in the query, which are the core patterns. But if I disable the core patterns, it also disables the remote patterns. Because earlier I disabled the core patterns, but I didn't have that should load remote block patterns return false in, and it actually disabled everything. Um, so you have the options to disable everything in one shot, or you can go and disable specific categories. So let's say you wanted to keep the featured category, uh, you could do that that way or whatever the case may be. Okay, so play around with that if you'd like to. We're not going to have time to do it, do it properly and test it today, but there are ways that you can do that. I am going to now find somebody that I can get to update this piece of documentation to specify that you need to call it with a priority of one because I was doing it with the default priority of 10. That's why it wasn't working. Um, awesome. That's my bit for today. We've got three minutes left. Does anybody else have any other questions about patterns, registering them, using them, uh, debugging them? or anything along those lines. I've ran out of coffee. <laughs> no questions, awesome. Um, if you do have questions uh, that you don't have time to ask now, you're welcome to hit me up on Twitter. I'm John underscore Boston John Twitter. I'm not very good at Twitter, so don't send me DMs, but ask me questions there. Um, I'm also in the Make WordPress Slack. So if you are there or if you want to join that, you're welcome to ask me questions there. Um, otherwise, thank you all for joining me today. It was lovely to share, share how to use patterns. Um, Sarah is happy about PHP. <laughs> I like that. Um, Twitter handle again, I'll type it in here. So it's John underscore Bossinger. Um, I'm, I'm pretty good at ignoring Twitter when I'm working and, and I generally only scroll it in the evenings. Uh, but if you do have questions, you're welcome to ask me there. Uh, but thank you all for joining me. Uh, thank you again, Catherine, for hosting. And thank you to Sarah for cheering me on in the background. Awesome. Thanks, everybody.